On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. There's a lot of news in the world today. News that might surprise you, startle you, upset, or maybe impress. News that's not always for the faint of heart. That's why the man who failed his way to success, Heath Oaks, is stepping up. Tackling today's headlines with ignorance on fire in a way only a millennial mogul can. Take off your sport coat, grab a beer, and enjoy the conversation. This is Second Shot with your host, Heath Oaks. Not going to lie, that came in really hot in my ears and my headphone. I mean, when that started up, I was like, bam, with the Heath Oaks voice, just like a champ in my ears. Just here to wake you up. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So I'm here today with my beautiful wife, Jenny. Hi, babe. And Zach and Matt, as always. Hey. I'm not going to say they're beautiful, you know. Well, not with that attitude. not going to go that far. I guess people will need to watch the YouTube episode so they can determine for themselves. Look at you, just a natural promoter. Just a natural (laughs) promoter. All day, aren't you? <laughs> I was just posting to Instagram telling people to listen to the most recent episode. So, yeah. yes, I am. Nice. <laughs> just smooth like glass. I love it. <laughs> you know? How's well, things in the uh, the Oaks household? You guys are still moving, right? Well, no, we ain't moving. We, 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 we have a <laughs> fountain. Do do? Ten years ago, we started construction it's true. on a home. Yeah. yeah. Fifteen years ago, mm-hmm. things started moving. Oh, mm. uh, gosh. It's all okay. good. You know, it's it's the lesson in being thankful for what you have. So house that we are currently in that we <laughs> is true. good. Yeah. Brighton has a little um, faux pool in the backyard, mm-hmm. which she's been loving. Oh, te- really? Temps oh, yeah. are in the all 90s. All redneck style. You know, one of those Walmart 499 uh-huh. numbers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love it. <laughs> redneck galore, baby. It's as good as it gets. <laughs> also, happy belated, Jenny. It's okay. Thank you, you so say, much. You yes, yeah. my twenty first birthday. It was so good. <laughs> yeah. it's so good. It's a big one. Twenty one. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Let's uh-huh. not go that far. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, well, this weekend I'll be we'll be in Alabama at a friend of ours wedding. What's going on in Oh, a friend of yours wedding. Great. Yep, yep. Alabama of all places. Alabama. Yeah. Yep, be on the lake and uh, about uh, he has a lake house in, in Alabama. They're getting married on the lake. Oh wow. So we're going to be there this weekend in old Alabama country. That'll be really nice. Yeah, Sweet home fun. Alabama. Yeah. Mm. You got family out that way? I don't. No. I've G- never G- even never been, been to Alabama. I think I think I was there once, like on accident, passing through or something. I don't <laughs> think I, I don't think I ever stopped for like. And not <laughs> to say it's bad. Shade I, to I, Alabama. I, 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 hey, they have a song, all right. And people remember <laughs> that it. That is so true. To be fair, that is true. Yeah, d- credit where it's due. Alabama's got something going for yeah, them. Yeah, because Texas doesn't have any. Uh, speaking of, <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny. Speaking of states where <laughs> things are happening, uh, got some football news for the first headline. This yes. really got Zach excited. Uh, football. <laughs> let me tell you, because I don't know anything about this, and in reading the article, I feel like I learned less. So hopefully, he can help me clear it up. Yep. Colts Andrew Luck is throwing footballs. It seems the day has finally come. Indianapolis Colts starting quarterback Andrew Luck was seen throwing an NFL-sized football in front of the media Tuesday as the team began their three-day minicamp. This is a huge step for the Colts and for Luck himself as many have doubted if Luck could return this season. Making short throws in minicamp might not be the biggest deal, but this is very encouraging for the prospects of the team in 2018. Keith, who is Andrew Luck and why can't he throw a football? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So here's, oh, the, no. Here's, oh, the no. long, here's the long and short of it. <laughs> yeah. Peyton Manning, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. I know him. Uh, was retired, was leaving. Yep. They drafted Andrew Luck first round, and he was the next best everything there is. This which, was a follow-up to Peyton Manning. Yeah. Yes, so and he big, was a child. Andrew Luck was a child, by the way, when he was drafted. Well, yeah, yeah, 21 or yeah, so, yeah. 22. Sure. And, and he lived up to what the hype was. He was killing it his first four or five seasons. And he had a shoulder injury, and he, he missed all of last year and half of the year before. So it's like that's their franchise player. That's everything. Their seat, the, you know, when he was there, they were winning record. Right. When he was out, not. Right. So, like, he everything hinges really on him. And when I saw the story, it was like there were people commenting about, okay, the Colts are going to be back this year. The Colts are going to be back. They're going to be winning again. And I just thought about how much influence he has – alone with being there like like the influence that he has being on the field that how others believe right like like how the team in that fourth quarter drive when it's Andrew Luck in that huddle and go we're gonna go down and score how much more they believe that that's gonna happen because of his influence alone and it got me to thinking about um, and I was reading this book and, and I'll tell you the go-giver series by Bob Berg are books that I recommend highly Jenny and I had a very we had a mutual 
love for the the original the go giver book and that was kind of one yeah, of the that first was things. one of the first things we were dating when i was like wow he's the real deal and we have so much in common because we both loved this book and it's I mean, it's been around forever i'm sure a lot of people listening have heard of it and also bob berg wrote uh, uh the forward on, the my, forward the, 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 on heath's book not the forward really the cool. the cover testimonial yeah oh, wow. the, the thing where yeah. where somebody important says sure. yes this is a really good book yeah, and, Bob and, did that. For and me. the Go Givers probably sold at least a million copies. I mean, it's a big book. I mean, it's so lot, and he's got a whole series. And so I got done reading his newest one, which was the Go Go Giver Influencer Influence. And and I started thinking about influence, right? Like mm-hmm. like how to you know a lot of people go, how do I get influence, right? And and um, some people throw out and use the word manipulation, you know, versus influence and all those. And one thing I always like to say is that you know manip- manipulation is when you get people to do things that you want done influences when you get people to do things that they want to do that those are the two biggest things and so how do you gain influence and how do you help others with influence how do you have the andrew luck influence that on you you can be the person that you solely come back and now all of a sudden everybody believes well, to go back to the point of Andrew Luck, and I actually lived in Indianapolis when all of this was happening and kind of lived through the whole big, I guess, rise of him and the expectation of him. So one thing that he did, at least when it came to football, was he lived up to the expectation. He lived up to the hype, and he did so quietly. So it was like, like I said, oh, he was a child. I joke about that, but I mean, really, he was coming into this big leadership position as somebody Taking who, over for Peyton Manning. Yeah, to, for, for, for the great. It wasn't like he was coming to a team where their quarterback was a nobody. Yeah. Everybody, even people like Zach who do not know about football, know who Peyton Manning is. So the first thing that he did in that example was he lived up to the hype yep. you know it is you know he he met expectations in some ways he exceeded expectations and he did so quietly especially in the beginning where he wasn't coming out there he wasn't out he in stayed the media. humble he wasn't out there being like i'm yeah. the best ever yeah he kept know, saying he, it's going to be hard to to to, to fill peyton's shoes he was very humble yes he was humble about it and it made people take note like okay well so so they had an expectation of an ego okay well that doesn't really seem to be there he seems but he also seems to be doing really well so he's performing but he's also not meeting the, you know, ex- expectation that he might have an ego or something like that. And he's also, he didn't start to really be out there as much in terms of asking for things in the public, like doing a big charity thing and saying, hey, everybody come out and see me till a couple years in. Yeah. So it was like he really took the time to prove himself and earn that uh, well, and then award he, as, then an, as an influence. The results on the field, though, then took well, over yes. as well so because exactly. he lived up to that as well that's I mean, what i'm saying yeah. you can have all the other but don't have the results and it's not going to happen either and if you only have results and that's all you have your results will diminish at some point or another and that influence is lost so it's 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 important to have both and with him too i think about a, a work environment you know how sometimes people say oh how is it to work there and and somebody will just say it's just it's just a bad environment but they can't really pinpoint like what is that one person has the ability to make the influence of a good environment or, yes, a, or, or a, a bad way. work environment. And it's crazy because you don't really think about, you know, I just, I just, I don't know. I just didn't really like working there. You might, it, it's like a subconscious thing, but the, it literally could be one sort of like bad apple that's influencing positively or negatively. So we all have to look at, is that me? Yeah. Well, and, you know, I also think about it as parenting, you know, uh, you know, it, how quickly you influence your kids. And, you know, I love it when the parents that will say, teach their kids, uh, don't lie, don't lie. But then somebody calls and goes, oh, tell them I'm not here. And, and they're teaching their kid then that it's okay to lie whenever <laughs> you want to. You sure. know what I mean? You've got to think about the small amounts of influence that I realized, like, I was drinking my water one day and I took a drink, went, ah, and next thing you know, Brighton is taking her drink going, ah. And now that's her thing. Like how quickly they pick up on everything sure. and, and how you have to think of those things that it is the simple thing. If when you say don't lie, but you tell them, say, oh, uh, somebody comes to the door, say I'm not here. That's lying. And it, you're, you're teaching your kid that that's an influence you're going to influence them on. That's funny. I had a conversation just the other day with somebody about um, there was some study that came out that was like, it's OK to teach your kids to curse. Yeah, because it's, it's a good way to get out anger and it's bad to bottle those things up. And if you say it, you get a better release of dopamine. So it helps you get over. I don't know. Whatever. But the point was, I was like, my parents never taught my like my, my dad. I guess I learned a lot of curses from my dad, but I learned them <laughs> when we were outside in the garage on a Saturday working on the car and mom wasn't around. And that yeah. didn't necessarily teach me 
about these words, what it taught me was the setting to use them. Don't yeah. use them when uh, people are around. Use yeah. them privately. Like, you know, you, that little it's thing. subconscious. You yeah, exactly. Those little things that you don't know about, like, you know, you can't think of at the time really do matter. And it seems like Andrew Luck is the kind of guy that understands that not only is he an influencer, but that it takes a village. That yeah. you got to come yeah. together and make these things happen. And everybody's got to have like their ducks in a row. And, and clearly when he's on the field, people just seem to line up. And one thing, I, w- I want to give a couple key things. Just a couple. There's a lot that could go on. But I, I think there's these two or three points that if I could give anybody, if they're trying to influence a situation, right? If they're trying to influence somebody for sales, if they're trying to influence somebody to... Um, helping them in their way, whatever it is, a couple of key things on influencing others and, and doing it. Number one is uh, you've got to be the one leading the charge and have results before you can influence anybody. Like you, you can't be the one telling everybody work hard and you show up late and leave early. Like it's not ever going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is if you're ever in a situation of negotiation or any of that and you're trying to influence somebody, right? You're buying that car and all that. One, one of the, uh, the second biggest key is to keep your emotions in check. If you if you start realizing that um, you you know slow down and breathe, don't spout your mouth off real fast. Think about it. You got it. You want to slow down, breathe, and think. Don't let your emotions take over and take control. The third thing, which is one of the biggest keys, is put yourself in the other person's shoes immediately. So when you slow down and breathe, your next thought should be okay. How is Zach seeing this right now? What does Zach think? What does Zach want? What does Zach need? Like if you're both mm-hmm. in a negotiation, you know, and instead of just thinking about what you want and need, put yourself in his shoes and say, what does Zach need? Like maybe this rides on his career too if he doesn't close my deal. Maybe I'm just thinking, you know, maybe it's a, a vice versa. And these are some a couple of the keys that I got out of the Go-Giver Influencer yeah, that's that good. have really hit me hard. You know, where I felt like I got to make sure in today's world, not enough people are putting somebody in uh, the other person's shoes. So I would say the number one is get results. Don't don't come in barking orders until you actually prove it and they see it. Number two is slow down, calm down, breathe, think, let your emotions take, you know, take control of your emotions. And number three is put your person true, put yourself in that other person's shoes truly, not a little bit. I'm talking about fully immerse it and say, See how you can poke holes in yourself to where they would see it on another way. And I think some of those things could help you influence in that if you want to be that person, like like it would be a great thing to be in a, a Andrew Luck's shoes that people look at you and go, man, that, like this person can help do it. And, and I want to encourage you to try to be that person, try to be that influence, try to go strive to do things different, to be an influence that when you're around, others feel better. Others feel like, like, like I'm going to be better if I'm with you. And I think a lot of world, the world can change if we have more people influencing in the right way. So we'll be back here in a minute for the second segment of Second Shot. He's a suit and tie kind of guy with deep southern roots. Heath Oaks hosts more of Second Shot coming up on RNCN. To all my friends in the great state of Texas, if you have not taken advantage, I have a way to save you a ton of money. I have saved over about $3,000 in the last year, and I have no hassle. Go to energyogre.com, put in the promo code Second Shot. Now listen, promo code Second Shot, and you're going to get a free month just for signing up and saving a ton of money. So don't be crazy. Stop sitting around talking about is this the real deal, and go do it right now. Energy Ogre. Dot com promo code second shot in a free month. Thanks. Go get it now. Run. Ready? Aim. Fire. Second shot is back for another round on RNCN. I swear that did you <laughs> did did my wife take some crack or something? She's over here doing like these like. <laughs> Like sideways dance thing all of a sudden. At least, like, at been least up, there's some motion. Up, she's, been, <laughs> she's been up since like 2.30 this morning. Somebody should not be as wound up as you are. That's got well, something to cut to at least, right? Like, hey, here's, here's dancing. Oh, see, I was thinking that part wasn't on video. Oh, yeah, oh, it was. Okay. No, no, we got it. We'll, maybe, we'll make maybe sure that's not. on. I don't know. Matt, you got a p- did you catch any of that? Oh, the video's always rolling. Oh, yeah. We can always <laughs> cut to the video. I was the video sure that in the YouTube anybody. version that was more of like an animation, like a second <laughs> well, star shot. <laughs> well, it right. is, but now it can be you dancing Great. because you, you're on there. Well, yeah. good. It was a really 
well coordinated, lovely. Just dance, gonna immortalize so. that. Yeah. Our daughter, right. our daughter's dancing. We got Brighton when we turn music. She'll sit there and just kind of bounce and bob yeah. and weave with it. Figuring it's it out. Super cute that she's starting to. This, this is just like this week. I need to write that in her baby book. Is she started to dance? Yeah, yeah. At, I bet at it, twelve months and one week old. I would bet her casual bobbing and bouncing and weaving looks exactly like me at any <laughs> wedding. Yes. Like, yes. Just horrible. Just yes. like yeah. No. This is music. Yeah, I can I can dance. Cut a, <laughs> cut a rug. I'm I'm hoping that she gets my dance. Dancing skills. Oh, you have dancing skills. So that no one oh, will oh, want to no, dance at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> but but I would rather have mine. So you know, ain't gonna worry about the boys like going. Oh man, look at you know she has her mom's dance sure. skills. You know I'm in trouble. Mm. Um, she has mine. I'm good. Don't you know, worry about it. Because trust me, she won't she won't be lighting <laughs> it up on fire. I can promise you that. Not a dancing queen. Speaking mm. of queens. Oh, what a segue. segue. Yeah, <laughs> people are dragging <laughs> Meghan Markle for showing her shoulders. And it's infuriating. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry made their first post-honeymoon appearance together over the weekend to celebrate trooping the color, and Meghan looked stunning. She also broke royal protocol, choosing to reveal her shoulders, gasp, in an outfit by Carolina Herrera. Uh, Naturally, uh, the Queen seemed okay with it. Everybody on the balcony seemed okay with it. The royal family seemed all right with it. But Twitter had a lot to say about it. And some of these tweets are pretty... Pretty damning, Heath. Uh, Kate will always be the classy one. Lady, she will never be a lady. When she, when is she going to learn to not wear a cocktail dress to a day function? Not the right dress for today. And her dress is astounding and a complete disrespect to royal tradition. So I know nothing about any of those traditions things, but everything about that, nothing about that dress said one thing about cocktail or anything to me. No, no she it was a barely, it wasn't even really off the shoulder. It was, it was like kind of yeah you can go y'all can shoulder. go google and and, and look yeah. at megan markle's dress i'm sure it's all i mean i it was i thought it was a very classy dress and i don't Definitely. know anything about this stuff. i agree yeah apparently it's outside of traditional royal protocol but but yeah she was slammed oh yeah and what i thought about was is what was the wedding like two or three weeks ago maybe yeah. okay so um and everybody i mean the overwhelming that i saw was just praise for it right Definitely. like how awesome it was and how yeah. great and then how quick all of a sudden, that can change on you for wearing <laughs> a dress that is, I thought was absolutely a perfect dress. But heavy um, as the crown, he. Yeah, yeah. And so I thought about this old saying that a lot of people call it different things, um, but I call it, you know, kind of the dip or um, the roller coaster type effect of things that in your life, in your career, in your personal relationships, you know, when everybody says. If uh, if it wasn't difficult, everybody would do it. You know, everything's worth, you know, that's the old saying, right? Sure. But what they're really kind of talking about is this dip. In anything that you do, there's a dip. Um, there's a, there, and you and that dip is when most people quit. So, for instance, I'll give you a podcast one, which was um, out of 287,000 thousand podcasts registered out there, only 30 or 40% are actually active a month. Um, overwhelming majority podcasts stop after seven episodes and quit and most never make it to 100 episodes and the ones that make it to 100 episodes are the ones that usually stay very consistent long term and do well there's a dip and we've seen it in our podcast as well that you know there was those times i got frustrated that i'm going we're just you know like we were at this one mark and then went down and then sure it started kind of coming back up and it stayed there and it's kind of like oh do you quit do you give up no, yeah, it's a dip. You got to ride it? the yeah. dip out, you know, and 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 in sales too, and especially what we do when I bring people in, I always tell them, look, when you come in here, you're going to hit a wall. It is going to fail. Everything's going to go wrong. Like if you name it, it's going to go wrong for you. You're going to. Some people come in and it starts from the get go, which means they make nothing. Everything fails for them in the first three months, and then it hits. Some it hit off, and they grab sales on the first two or three months, but then the dip comes after that. So it's going to be happen, and that's where most people quit. So in marriage relationships, that happens too. That's why people fail at marriages because a dip happens, which means the honeymoon phase is over, and you got to actually work through issues with each other. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's when people quit and give up. The thing is, is how do you know when it's a dip and when it's like a cul-de-sac, when you just go around in circles and you go, is it, because I don't believe in never quitting. I believe there's a time that you've got to move on, but then there's the dips. And it's always, what you've got to regulate in my mind is figure out, is the dip worth the reward, right? Are you, whatever you're doing is, sti- if you know going into it that a dip is going to happen and the long-term reward is worth it, you'll stick it through. But most people don't. So what are your thoughts around the dip? 
So that's interesting. Well, when I think about the dip, I think of this more like in, a, in an interpersonal type of way, whereas especially somebody, you know, high level like Meghan yep. Markle, you know, gets elevated to this fame. And sometimes when people have that big elevation right prior to the dip, they kind of ditch their, you know, regular friends, your middle school girlfriend that's, you know, works at Target. You're yeah. like, oh, well, I have these, you know, I have these new royal friends. But here's the thing. When you go through the dips, that's, I mean, that that will define who your actual friends are mm -hmm. and, and not just friends, friend friends, but also sort of colleagues, people in your business, people in your industry, people who still respect you. Um, because you, you're going to make it out to the other end, right? But then after the dip, who was there? Mm -hmm. And if you all, if you're the one who got rid of the other people, well, that's on you, you know? So I think it's about maintaining those people around you who are going to love you through everything and kind of keep a hold of you. You know, I just went through a job change and, and it's like, it's, it's crazy how quickly you will kind of say, oh, wow, the, this person doesn't reach out anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know? And so, and so it, it just, each time you do that, it, it redefines and it redefines and then you start a new job and maybe they reach out again and, you know, um, I just think it's important to surround yourself by your regular friends, people who aren't famous or aren't, um, you know, really high up in their industry, but are your, just like your friends. Well, yeah. but just uh, like those regular. Sure. I mean, and thinking yeah. about people. it even more so. So it's a totally different take that we that well, we both have. And but <laughs> dealing with the dip, I think it's important to have your, you know, whether it's your family, your. Best you must friend, all. Yeah, you always. You're going to have to have your relationships to help you through a dip, yeah. but. A lot of times I get a lot, um, a lot of people always ask on how do they know when it's like the right move to, to move or, or not, right? And sure. I love the illustration of a dip or a cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac just goes in circles, you mm -hmm. know? And, and when you're in a spot that's going in circles, that's yeah. when, that's how you know to quit and move on. And, and here's the thing is there are times that you may, you may be that person that has your 10 years with a company, you've moved up real fast and now you're kind of plateaued and, you know, and, and, and you're not, you're doing well, everything's great, but, but you're not you're not striving to be the best anymore, you're comfortable, um, then that may be a good time to quit and go somewhere that they don't see you as that young person that 10 years ago that you're not mm -hmm. going to get that chance for next moves. And then there's the dips of, well, I get a lot of people in the sales and stuff. It's like, look, what is your, what are you shooting for long term? Anything there's going to be. If you're starting off the new job being a customer service person, Understand you're going to have a dip where you're going to have a dip because you're going to have lack of knowledge than everybody else that you're going to, have to catch up on. So you're going to be behind at times, but the, you don't want to just make it through the dip. You want to forge through the dip. You right. want to power through. Here's the thing. I always tell everybody the dip will happen no matter what. There are zero ways around a dip in anything you're starting out, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a career, whether it's your own business, whether whatever it is. There will be a dip. Mm -hmm. The people that are great are the, and the only way to get, the only way to make that dip less of a burden is to work faster in the dip, which is harder because mm -hmm. you mentally are going to be beat down. You mentally will have a struggle. So you got to step your game up even more. So when you're the worst mentally and you're the most exhausted and your worst feels like going their way, you have to do more than you've ever done because your dip will go from three months to a month and a half. You're not going to pass the dip, but it's going to be faster. Right. If you want to climb the steep mm -hmm. hill, you got to step on the gas. Mm -hmm. And so, for mm -hmm. instance, I know yeah. in, Jenny's, in Jenny's line of work, she talks about a lot that the majority of the people quit after their first job or whatever because... <laughs> the first job for everybody is a dip. <laughs> yeah. yeah, <laughs> That's a guarantee. And, well, and, and, that, and, and sometimes maybe their first one is not. Maybe it's right. really good. But then the next one, maybe they it's, it's the dip. But the dip happens... And that's when you find out if they want to be journalists or if they were just excited about being on TV, right? Yeah, yeah. It does kind of, uh, I think that the dips help you define your passion too. Like, do I like this do you enough, love it enough to keep doing this even though I have to get up for work at two in the morning for 15 years or even though I work weekends or even though the pay isn't where I want it to be? You know, I mean, it, journalism has to be a real passion. You have to really, really, really care about meeting people and telling them well, telling people their all think it's just a pretty thing. You get to be on air and glamorous, but they yeah. don't understand the dirty work that has to go in your first you know, eight yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, and you have to care about the people you're telling the stories to. And so that goes the same for any job, whether you have that, you know, side of inside passion that's going to carry you through the downtime so to speak but shoot i don't even think it's the best that makes it in my business i really think it's just the people who just keep going like yeah, just but those keep are, that plugging is the along no, no, but that is the best you see what I'm that saying? is like, the difference natural between. talent though babe like yeah. like natural talent like you know some people you look at and you're like man they are so good but but th what they don't have is that resilience to just 
keep making it through so then their natural talent only takes them so far and then the people who say sure i'll keep getting up at two in the morning i will keep getting up i will keep getting up i will keep but getting that up. is the difference then between you great not it. you can have all the talent in the world but it's the resilience and that persistence right. and yeah. to make it though so what more so is think about it if you're in that situation where you feel like you're in that cul-de-sac where it's a dead end and it's a stuck that may be time to be thinking about moving on if you're in a dip that's different if you're looking at taking on any situation, if you're getting married, if you are getting changing a, a career, if you're starting a new job or, or if you're, you're totally starting your own business or if you're doing any of those things, what I want you to think about ahead of time is the dip will happen. And so when the dip happens and the money's down and I'm not making anything, it's a short term pain. Will it be worth it for you to stick it out for the long run? So that's how you can tell if what you're going to go into and do, if it's worth it for you. Is the long-term payoff worth the short-term pain? And so that's one thing that you really want to think about on whatever you're stepping into. Is this person I'm marrying worth the dip? Is this career that I'm going into worth the dip for the long-term game? Because it will happen. There's no way around it. So I hope you take that to heart and take a couple of those things and feel like, look, if you're in that dip now, just forge through, work faster and harder, and you're going to get past it. We'll be back in a minute with the third segment of Second Shot. Now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Second Shot with Keith Oaks still to come. You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com, audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share it with your people, and I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Go pick it up today. Kick off your boots or suit up. The choice is yours. Welcome back to Second Shot on RNCM. I was just about to get Zach and he pushed the start button at the perfect time for this episode, uh, timekeeper. What? I got what, what you. What can did I good. do? You did good. You started it perfect. Oh, well, yeah, but I mean, I barely. I well, almost missed it. You almost I, caught me. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Almost doesn't count. You I, need a, I, I, need a, I need a lesson in, in working into a habit. You're in a dip right now, Zach. <laughs> I just... The I, book, but, but we're here for you. We're your well, real friends. You. That's very the, sweet. The book called The Power of Habit yeah. is one of the best books in the world about habit. The Power of Habit. The Power of Habit. It's amazing. Yeah. I love it. I love, 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 love the book. What did it do for you? It changed everything. I've read it several times. I mean, it, it, it helps you understand how a habit happens. And so I'm one of those that as soon as I can understand the why behind why, why maybe I'm look, why, why like maybe I always like to look at any situations of where, why am I, why does that make me feel that way? Why do I get upset about that? Right. Yeah. And when I can mm-hmm. understand that, then I can usually make changes. And so the power of the habit, that's what it, 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 um, it talks about is why we do certain things and habits and it kind of um, explains how to break the habits and, and some of your cues and all those things. So I like it. The power of habit. I'll check that out. Yep. It's a yellow cover. I can't remember who wrote it. But yeah. I know it's the, the power, of, power of habit. The power, power of, of habit. habit. I had the cord stuck around my foot. <laughs> 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 so uh, we got a couple emails. Again, Second at gmail.com, guys. Y'all know this is when we like to see um, any emails you got. Maybe headline suggestions. Maybe you want to tell us we stink. Whatever you want to do, just, yeah. just holler at us and tell us. Second at gmail.com. And also, I'm still going to shame you on the reviews. And I want to appreciate a couple of those people. They have actually been actually doing some of the reviews. Thank you who actually listened and got tired of getting shamed and actually did it. <laughs> yes. Shout out. Shout out. I appreciate you so much. People have been reviewing and they are. Um, Figuring out how to listen, figuring out how to subscribe, because yep. some, sometimes people will just find one episode and then they go to their podcast and they're not there. So you want to hit subscribe too, so that they come up every Friday. That's what it's all about. Yeah, uh, and then you can go to my YouTube channel at um, Heath Oaks if you go on YouTube, and these will be on there to where you can watch them as well. Yeah, uh, watch every single one of them. <laughs> um, so we got one of these emails. Okay, so this is a person said uh, the the headline says something to mention about Denny's. Because talk oh. about our IHOP member, our oh yes, which I, I was hop. wrong on that because I was thinking IHOP was for yeah breakfast. you were wrong for the record it's at International House of Burgers that's crazy did anybody out there in the world think it was going to be that's, burgers that just doesn't make no. sense honestly some yeah. people guess bacon or biscuits bacon or biscuits breakfast I heard bankruptcy that was a good one yeah, yeah that's funny <laughs> stop it <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you did a little, the little uh, drum sound on that one. That's right. Denny's <laughs> yeah. would have appreciated that. Uh, but this is from Tyler Call, who I think is a, he's a fan of the show. He, he's written in before. Said, hey, I just listened to your most recent podcast where you're talking about IHOP changing its name, and you mentioned Denny's marketing in there at some point. Um, he said, I agree that it isn't really helping them, but they do actually have a really good way of practically free advertisement. Both Denny's and Wendy's have great social media t- teams, work on Twitter and Tumblr. I personally like Wendy's tweets and stuff better, but their activity on those platforms gets shared a lot because people think it's funny, which gives them more free advertising. Thanks for doing this podcast. I learned a lot from it. Hope you guys have a great week. Thanks. Um, so... What I think is hilarious about that, too, mm. is that did y'all see the Wendy's and all of their Twitters? Yes. That was in, they was were trolling hilarious. IHOB oh, yeah. so bad. Oh, man. I they, mean, it was hilarious. Like, I mean, that was like the most epic wars of fast food, like joints and stuff. Or talk, You know, like I, the most shade I've ever seen. It, and, and, it was, and it was great. And, and think about it. IHOB did their big media stunt but wendy's and all of them they came in and kind of stole the show some with arby's all their, is good too yeah oh they were like vultures like yes. as soon as it came out that it was burgers every water social burg- media water burgers, team yes. water bur- water burger social media team is great oh sure i mean like you know honestly i follow some of them just because they're hilarious they're, oh yeah they're, they're, they're how they make in front of each other almost and it's like people it's like with people versus in it's the companies it's, it's so, so cool. funny <laughs> yes it is well and it, it's it's like Originally, companies were so stale and so stark, and nobody yes. t- paid attention. They're but being now way too serious. They're being way too serious, and now it's just it's hilarious when they do it. Yeah, it humanizes them in, yeah. a, in a way, yes. and it brings them them down to earth, and it makes it feel like okay, this corporate brand has a sense of humor that I can identify with. Yes, but it's yeah. like it, it's kind of you know I was telling our our company the other day with some of it, you know, they put out the same stories of their uh, they how to get their social media up, and it's always the uh, here's eight reasons why to buy short-term disability and Aww. stuff, you know. And I'm like, you know, it's <laughs> like it's it's tough. You yeah. you got to you've got to get better than that. You've got to be more creative. And and you look at um, uh, Wendy's and I mean, like honestly, people get oh, I want to follow McDonald's today to see a picture of a burger from them or something. No, no, they do it because they're creative and they put out funny stuff and they make they all make fun of each other's chains and stuff. I mean, like. How many followers does a Wendy's and stuff have? Wendy's? Or Burger King or whatever. They didn't used to have that many, but they they hired this brilliant girl a while back, uh-huh. this woman who, who was running it for them. And they, they, they got to a point oh, where like, people were wearing Wendy's like, t-shirts because of their Twitter I'm account. I'm on it. Oh, so, how many followers? Yeah. How, how many followers do they have? Just to put you right on the spot. 1.6 million. Burger 1. King 6 does Burger have 1.6 million. 1. million. This is a funny one that they did. Um, so somebody tweeted to uh, tweeted and said hey at burger king do you have a grill at ihob can borrow and then burger king replies sorry old burger king can't come to the phone right now <laughs> <laughs> right they changed their change their yeah. twitter logo to pancake yeah, king pancake that was king. their their fire back i mean that's just I great it. i mean it, it truly is genius it's outside the box it's outside of the norm and they're all doing it and it's becoming a thing to be funny and and how they do it and 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 when they when they have that kind of followers and build that because it has to be hard I mean, in an insurance company, for instance, it's hard to do something that, because insurance is different even than fast food where, you know, insurance is serious. That's serious business for people, right? Sure. I mean, it's – so it's hard to be – where's that line of how can they get – because not many people want to follow just to read about eight things of short-term disability can help out, right? But, right. But, but – Like, how do you stay on brand but also be yes. fun and engaging yeah. and, and – funny and and it's gotta be it's smart. gotta be tough for a lot of really old you know very very i should say old um um established, long, yeah, established companies thank you jenny uh that have been around for a real long time because to them it's like well this is business and business is business and we don't need to get on social media and philander about with with throwing shade at people and that's not what we do and like it's true to a point like yeah, the world's to, the world's yeah. always turning thing yeah new things are always happening don't be xerox mm, don't be, don't yeah. be xerox Sure. And then, then the other one we got is from Brenda Walker. She was the one who sent the uh, email last time we answered the question. Um, she That's was the right. one who was uh, who let who, who left her job. They had thirteen month old daughter. Yes, yes, you know? yes. Brenda said, "Thank you, Heath and Jenny and team for a great segment. My eyes water as you spoke to my last email. Uh, still a roller wow. coaster of emotions, but this shall too pass. Uh, you did very. You did help me very much. Good news. I have." Telephone and in-person interviews coming up. One interview is... Uh, yes, Brenda! Yeah. One interview is because of knowing someone. Unfortunately, that still happens. And I am okay if I take an in-between job. Not ideal, but when you have a baby, it's better than unemployment. Yeah. Yep. Better news. I'm keeping my promise. Work half days. Network the other half. I do feel some time off. Uh, hopefully, I won't go stir crazy. Thank you. 
Big hugs, stay cool in Texas, and keep smiling your daughter's sunshine to your day, I bet. Yes, Aww. Aww. yes, and, and your your baby too. And there's no way she's going to be able to go stir crazy because even if she's home for half yeah, the with day, the with the 13 month old, I yeah. know that she's, it's like, man. And you know what else is hard? I give her a lot of credit for too because the days when you're home with a child do fly. It's like you yes. get nothing done. <laughs> so the fact that she's structuring it like this, I'm guessing she's working during naps or perhaps has somebody helping out here and there. Um, it's a, it's, it, it it is harder to structure your time when you have that baby. So I'm guessing that the second that the nap starts, that's when she's doing it. Or the other thing that I know Heath does a lot of is like be home and awake and available during that last little chunk of the day with the family. And then as soon as bedtime starts, because they go to I'm bed pretty early, it's like back to work mode. So that's another sort of chunk of time just because I can relate to her in the mom world that as soon as, soon as bedtime starts, you can be like, okay, I'm going to give myself two hours here. Yeah. to respond to emails or whatever. Well, and there's always a way to figure it out. It's just how bad do you want it? A lot of people go, well, I'm too busy. I can't. No, it's just not your priorities. Right. And it's not easy. It, it's 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 not easy, but you if you want it that bad, you're going to figure out a way to do it. Sure. Heath always you know? gets me with that one. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just, I, I, I do. It, it, it does irritate me when I hear that I don't have time. I have been. I haven't said that in like two years. Well, I know, so you know. I, but it's just always. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, no, well, I'm curious. Why? Yeah, why does Well, that? Because, because it's just not, it's a, not priority. a priority. Because he's saying, well, did you go to the gym? Yeah. Okay, well, so that was a priority. Right. So like if, 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 for example, if I were to say to him, gosh, I just, sorry, there's no food in the house or, or sorry, our daughter is grown out of her clothes six months ago and she doesn't have she yeah. goes and i'll say oh well i just haven't had time and he says no you haven't made a priority because you which went is to the not gym it's or, not a bad it's not thing. a bad it's, it's not, not that it's never I'm, a negative it's no. not it's not that i'm saying that no, she's yeah. bad for doing that i'm just saying when you change in your mind when you get out of this habit of saying i didn't have time and you get into realizing that means it's not a priority what you do to it is you make yourself realize like when you have to say it's not a priority versus i don't have time you automatically, all of a sudden, start doing things um, a little bit more because that's a harder pill to swallow to it's say harder, yeah. it's not a priority. It's harder to say. I like it because it actually gives the control back to you yes. because sometimes you can feel like you're floundering, like, oh my gosh, you know, I need more time in the day. I need more days in the week. It gives you the control back to the choices that you make. So so I always, for like I said, gym, health, I think it's big time priority. I think that that's usually outside of work and family that will be my priority. I know the benefits I receive from that. Um, so that will be, but I know I'm making that choice. Yes. Right. And that's so what that priority gives, does. It gives me control over it and peace of mind. That's what I'm just choosing to do. Yeah. And it's very practical because if somebody would say, well, I couldn't do that. I didn't have the money. That's like a tangible yeah. thing. Like mm -hmm. we've got time. Yeah, you, you had time. Well, like well, time you, was spent. You, there was time. Well, yeah. you, but, well, I mean, it's like, you know, you worked all day, right? Sure. Okay. That was your priority. The, right. the getting the batteries from Lowe's was not your priority, which yeah. it's not that it's right or wrong. It's just it helps you. I think I believe it has helped me in my mind not get a free pass on things I just forgot to do and act like I didn't have time when right. I just didn't make it. Because if I made it a priority, I'd have got the inspection done in my car a long time ago, so my registration wouldn't be a year old. Sure. So that people wouldn't call me out on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. So and, I saw and, my expired registration. And I appreciate, yeah, the, the ownership of it. I didn't have time implies that I didn't have a resource available to me. But there, you was, there was some kind of big or something yes. that didn't grant me that ability. It wasn't a priority means I decided not to do yes. it. Yeah, there's a difference in ownership. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. Where can we find you at, Jenny? At Jenny and Chando TV on Twitter, at Jenny and Chando on Instagram. Instagram and Facebook and watch the Instagram stories because I always show really embarrassing behind the scenes of my husband. It's a great time. Totally worth it. Uh, at Apple Zackintosh on Instagram and Twitter. I'm trying to get more into Instagram. I'm struggling. I'll L get there. Leave us some reviews. Secondshotcast at gmail.com. Send us an email. Ed Heath Oaks on uh, or Ed Nick on fire. Look me up on all of the handles as always. Love you guys. Have a good one.